Well, as many of you know, all the priests of the Archdiocese were on retreat last week. It was led by our retreat director was Archbishop uh, Richard Smith whom I had never met before, but many of you know him. He was raised right here in this parish. He was an altar server here. And uh, I hadn't met him before. My goodness, he gave a beautiful retreat. What a absolutely wonderful man, deep faith, uh, just offered a beautiful, humble retreat. I was really, really profoundly moved by it. And it was a great week of uh, prayer, but also unity in our you know, I felt a great sense of unity with my, my brother priest. It was a beautiful week. And so I fell into the retreat. Now I want to tell you a little story about Thursday evening. I was sitting around talking to a few guys, one of whom, who was just standing right on my right-hand side here, was Archbishop Brian Dunn, our bishop. And um, we were sharing, you know, a few stories about the retreat and all this kind of stuff. And uh, I, I just said, you know, uh, this week, uh, in the evening hours, I was reading A Journey of a Soul by St. Therese of Lisieux, and I loved it, but I was profoundly moved by uh, Therese's father. And so I just said to the group I was talking to, you know, I was really moved by the, this gentle nature of this dear father, and I, I, think, I think I'm going to preach on that on Sunday. And Archbishop Dunn looked at me and said, it's Mother's Day. <laughs> so, my dear mother who's watching on live stream, i sorry I forgot about. i sorry I had to be reminded by my Archbishop that it is Mother's Day coming up on Sunday. <laughs> when I began theological studies, my mother told me that she was very grateful that I said yes to Jesus' call in my life. And she told me something in my first year of uh, studies that I hadn't known before. She said, every day that I have been alive, she's prayed for me. And so mothers, continue to pray for your children. Because if there's hope for me, there's hope for all of us. <laughs> mothers, keep praying for your children. You're, the power of your prayers cannot be overestimated. And of course, especially today, but every day, let us pray for our mothers, too. I also want to acknowledge, as I said in that brief introduction, that for many, many different reasons, this day can be difficult for some. So let us also, as a parish, today, may we be a witness to the grace of consolation for those who are reminded of sadness and those who grieve today. And we should also express our gratitude for those, and there are many I'm thinking of right now, who are spiritual mothers. They don't have children of, the own, of their own, but they pray for children who God has called them to pray for. So I'm thankful for all of these various roles of motherhood, and of course, especially our Blessed Virgin Mary. So as we think of mothers today, now I'd like to follow on with this a little bit to consider the life of the family. You may be aware, but our parish highlighted over Facebook this week and in our printed bulletin that was also emailed out an expression of a way that we're celebrating this week of life and the family. And uh, we've seen through these wonderful testimonies that were given uh, through these reflections by these wonderful families, right? And isn't it lovely to hear stories about people in our parish, real people that we, we, we know from around the parish, or at least who are involved in the life of the parish. And I think there's a common theme in all of them, is that faith cannot be reduced to going to Mass on Sundays, as important as that is. But faith calls us to live out our faith every day of the week. And part of that, of course, is living it out in the midst of our family context with all of its complexities and all of our ups and downs, family life, of course, is not easy. And you know what? There are many struggles in many homes and there are many struggles in many parishes. Nothing is perfect. Jesus knows this. Jesus knows the human condition and he knows we need something in which to anchor ourselves in the midst of the chaos of life, something at the center of our innermost being. The psalmist refer to this place 
the center of our being as a place where deep cries unto deep. It's a place where in the midst of daily life, our souls, our innermost selves, that deep center of our innermost being abides. This is what Jesus asked us to do. Abide, abide in me, and I will send to you the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, who will not leave you orphaned. It is through this place of abiding, whether consciously or unconsciously, that we make decisions. I just want to repeat this. It is through this place of abiding we all abide in something. And it is through this place of abiding that whether consciously or unconsciously, we make decisions. And so here, just let me use a couple of examples. If we abide in fear, we will avoid, avoid confronting that in which we fear. We'll choose, we'll choose safety over growth. If we abide in pride, we avoid confronting our faults. We choose spiritual blindness over humility. And so we see that the center of our being can abide in many, many things. But at the bottom, but the bottom line is that we must abide in something. If we abide in anything but Jesus, we ultimately are making a decision to choose our ability over his. And though this may seem like the safer option, if we choose ourselves, we actually in turn limit our lives to a great degree. Jesus wants us to set us free. Jesus asks us how to allow him to be the center of our lives because he wants us to center our lives on the gift that he leaves us to guide us and sustain us every day of our lives, and this gift is the Holy Spirit. This is God's very self. God's very self is the gift, the Holy Spirit. So, I have a question. Have you invited the Holy Spirit to abide in you? One of the most ancient prayers of the church is simply, Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. And in our first reading, when Peter and John laid their hands on people, they simply said, Receive the Holy Spirit. In the Gospel reading today, Jesus says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love me. If presupposes you answer the very basic question that's at the root of all of this. It's the question that Jesus explicitly asked Peter elsewhere in the Gospels. It's this question here. Do you love me? Remember when he asked Peter three times, do you love me? Jesus is asking us, do you love me? Do you love Jesus? Sit with that question sometime this week. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> do you love Jesus? <laughs> Praise God out of the mouth of babes. <laughs> Sit with that question for a little while this week in your quiet time. This question and our response to it is at the very heart of our lives. It is the journey. It is not possible to be a disciple of Jesus and not allow this question to penetrate our hearts. Friends, Jesus is not interested in our mistakes. He's God. Jesus is not interested in our mistakes. He's God. He can fix that. Jesus is not interested in keeping a daily tally of our sins. He's God. He can forgive us. He simply wants us to know if we love him. He wants us to know is our heart, our mind, our soul oriented toward loving him. Then simply ask him the question, come Holy Spirit. And know this spirit of truth did not come to condemn you, but to help you follow these two great commandments of Christ, which fulfills all the law and the prophets, love God and love others. If you obey me, if you love me, you will follow my commandments. So don't focus on your failures or your sin. God can fix that and remove the, the burdens. 
Focus your heart toward Jesus. What's the image that we want to present as a parish? In our first reading from Acts, Philip cured many who were paralyzed and lame. Many of us today, many of us in our world, are paralyzed by fear, anxiety, and stress, and unforgiveness. Our society has become lame, consumed by self-centeredness. I would say consumed by consumerism itself. And it seems that many abide in the desire to malign others who dare believe in God, God who is love, God who is abounding in mercy and full of compassion. So Jesus is calling us to simply orient our hearts toward him, to love him. This calls us into the beauty of self-giving. If you love me, Jesus asked, make yourself a gift to others. So what's this image that we want to present as a parish? That all who live here in the Sambro Loop will know that we are a beacon of faith, of hope, and of love. And that in the midst of all of these present challenges, Jesus has not abandoned us. We have not been left as orphans, but he calls us beloved. I want you to trust this in your very soul. So where does your heart abide? Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. How do we do this? Well, in the quiet recesses of your soul, answer that question. Do you love Jesus? Ask him, come Holy Spirit. Go to confession. Get get that burden off your chest. Walk in the truth that is gone. Your sins are cast from you as far as the east is from the west. Walk in that freedom of knowing that God is merciful. And you know, At confirmation, one of the words that the bishop says when he anoints people is be sealed with the Holy Spirit. Be sealed with the Holy Spirit. And it's good to be reminded of that every once in a while. Receive the Holy Spirit and to come back to this deep well. And you know, I just feel moved now that if anyone here today is interested in answering that question in the recesses of their own mind, yes, Lord, I love you. Give me your Holy Spirit. If you need a little renewal of that, it would be a pleasure now. I'll just go to the, to the center of the sacristy here, and, or sorry, the sanctuary. And uh, if you're interested in having hands laid on you, just like, just like uh, John and Peter did, all they did was say, receive the Holy Spirit. If you're interested in having me lay hands on you and simply say those same words that are in Scripture, receive the Holy Spirit, please feel free to come forward. Receive the Holy Spirit.
so good to us. Praise you, Lord God, you are so good. When the Holy Spirit falls upon us, we are changed. We are made new in Christ. Receive that change today. Be made new in Christ today. Praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for pouring your spirit out upon this parish. You are so good to us, Lord. 